What's up? Welcome to group. I hope you are comfortable and ready to dive in. My name is Dan and I get the privilege uh, of teaching and continuing our Have a Seat series this week. We were talking about times in our lives where we have thought, man, I wish, and then fill in the blank, were here right now. I wish they were here. I wish they could experience what I am experiencing. Or I wish they could just have what I have. I wish they could see what I see. And then we're trying to think about that in terms of church, in terms of a relationship with Jesus. The, I just wish they could experience what I have. And we're talking about how sometimes the easiest thing to do is to simply say, have a seat. To invite someone to sit next to us and experience it together. We're looking at a story in John chapter 4 where this is basically what happens. It's an awesome story of Jesus breaking down some cultural norms and some boundaries in order to have a conversation with a Samaritan woman. And in this conversation, Jesus uses a well and water to try to connect the dots for her. Jesus knows her situation. He knows her past. He knows how messy it has been. He knows that she has been desperately searching for something. So he uses the whole getting water from a well to answer a question that she had that she may not have even realized that she actually had. She's looking for something to satisfy. She is searching for something deeper, something to make her whole, something to fulfill. And so far she's 0 for 5, at at least on husbands being the answer. The thirst or the pursuit is real, but she's just pursuing the wrong thing. She's just drinking from the wrong things. And what Jesus is trying to get her to see when talking about water, is that he is the only one, he is the only thing that can satisfy what she's looking for. That water, that man, that woman, the job, money, vacation, or experience, that will always leave you thirsty for more because it wasn't meant to satisfy. So last week, we left off with Jesus stating some tough truths to a woman. He let her know that, man, he knows about her past. He knows she's been searching for something, but she can't seem to find it. And after Jesus told her he knew about her past, her response is one of my favorites in the entire Bible. She looks at him and she goes, sir, uh, I see you're a prophet. She's like, okay, you're one of those guys. You're, you're someone who seemingly knows things because of God, I guess. So, so maybe in an honest attempt to get an answer to a question she's had for a long time, or, or maybe in an effort to just change the subject from her past, she asks Jesus a question. And as John mentioned last week, uh, Jews and Samaritans... They don't get along. They actually hate each other, and for a lot of reasons. But in the history of this hatred and separation, they began to worship in two different locations, each believing they had the right location. So she decides to ask Jesus this controversial question about where the correct place to worship was. She's probably like, hey, this guy seemingly knows, somehow knows everything about me. Maybe he can also settle this once and for all. And then we'll no longer be talking about my five ex-husbands. You know, win-win. You know, but Jesus kind of brushes off the question because he knows this isn't the question that she needs answered. It's not the question. So Jesus basically says, eh, where or the location doesn't really matter. It's the worship that matters. And I don't think she really liked this answer very much because her answer, she kind of shrugs and goes, I don't know about that, but I do know one thing. The Messiah, the guy, is coming and he'll explain it to us. And then comes the best part. Jesus leans in and says, yeah, that's me. I'm the guy. I love how the message translation phrases it. Jesus goes, I am he. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. Wait no longer and look no further. What you are looking for is me. Who you are waiting for is me. What satisfies is me. I am the answer to what you need. The question the woman needed to answer wasn't about where to worship. It was about who to worship. The real question she needed to answer was, who is this guy? Who is Jesus? And what does that answer mean for my life? As the story continues, Jesus' disciples show back up and she leaves. It actually says she leaves her water jar at the well and runs back to town. She goes to grab everyone and she says, come and see this guy. Her encounter with Jesus changed not only what she was doing in the moment getting water, but ultimately changed her entire life. She had an experience and said, man, I wish they were here to meet this guy. I gotta go grab him. So here's the question I want us to really think through this week. When we think about who Jesus is and we honestly answer that question, what about the answer should cause us to leave our water jar, to drop what we're doing, and run to tell others, come and see? What about our answer should cause us to invite others to have a seat? Because if you can just experience 
what I've experienced, if you could just meet this guy named Jesus, everything will be different. 